Have you ever considered getting involved with a clinical trial for your MS? Today, Dom and Sharma Lee are discussing what you might want to consider before taking the plunge. Trials for smoldering MS. You know, there's a couple of questions which I think people want to know. Should I get involved in one and how? Getting involved in trials are actually a good thing um, for conditions or parts of the condition where there isn't a treatment for it. Most drugs which are on market have spent 10 years in clinical trials before they come into it. So one way of thinking about getting involved in trials is that you're getting early access to some of the best um, future drug treatments. So I would always say get involved in a trial. Um, obviously you do need to look up the side effects of the potential trial and what it involves. And it's a good idea to understand about different phases of trials. So there's what we call phase one or safety. And you've got phase two, which tries to understand that how the drug works. So it's more about um, having blood tests, MRIs, even lumbar punctures. And then phase three is the much larger, which is looking to see if it impacts on clinical outcomes. And generally speaking, once uh, a drug um, has gone through phase two into phase three, you're more likely to only pick up the very rare side effects in phase right. three studies. So really phase three studies are an easy bet because it kind of tells you that it's gone through phase two already and has been shown to be efficacious on a mechanistic efficacious level. Efficacious means it works, yeah? So phase two is, does it work? Phase three is, is there enough data from a large population of people to say, I would say to people, there is a brilliant website. It's a US-based website that covers almost all the trials going on in the world. And it's www.clinicaltrials.gov. And that will be in the description of the video below as well. Clinical trials, having taken part in them, involve time and expense. You know, am I supposed to fund this? So, good question. It depends um, is the answer. So you need to look at those fine details about the yeah. trials. Generally speaking, I would say that um, pharmaceutical funded trials do have reimbursements, but um, what we call investigator-led studies, which are being run by clinicians who have an interest mm. in that specific drug and they think it works, they may not have as much money to yeah. run their studies. So um, it's a good idea to check um, yeah. especially if you desperately want to participate but you do have that travel budget to consider. Most of us are regular people, not scientists, not doctors, etc. So I want to be involved in clinical trials. I'm understandably concerned. How do I know if it's right for me? You know, I turn up to you as a patient going, Dr. Nonapavan, I want to be on this clinical trial. Who determines if it's right? Me, you, who, what? I would say a combination of everybody. I think um, participation in clinical trials should be a discussion which happens at every consultation. So um, patient and doctor? Yes. Oh, okay. um, interestingly, I was speaking to one of my colleagues in Cambridge and they asked that as a question at every consultation. And this is not something which I've directly incorporated into my practice, but now I see maybe actually what they're doing is probably right. And they say to the patient, is this right for you still? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, I think it's a good idea to keep patients informed of what's happening um, rather than having to resort to, for example, Daily Mail to see what's helped. There should be sites where things are kept up to date. Um, the clinicaltrials.gov site is... Um, is there to kind of stimulate every clinical trial running, but it may be a bit technically challenging for the average um, layperson to get their head around it. I would also say, folks, as somebody who's taken part in 30 years in several clinical trials, you have a better standard of care, I would say, because you have more time with the clinicians because somebody else is paying for it, frankly. What are the barriers that people have to taking part in clinical research? There's several. But I think uh, they were twofold, um, some specific to areas. For example, access is a major problem. You've access already... as in, do I live close enough? Is yes. That happening? Okay, sorry. And unfortunately, um, clinical trials, because of the way drugs are given, happen to happen in cities. Right. So for people with disability, often access is a major problem. Right. Um, if you take Royal London, for example, I think you will be able to get two hour free parking at the mm. Sainsbury's 10 minutes away. Also, in addition, specifically for this area, it's just trying to encourage ethnic minority um, patients with MS to participate in clinical trials. They're probably the smallest group. It's not that 
Um, they don't get MS, they do get MS, but right. their participation is quite poor. Um, that may be because of innate understandings about what clinical trials involve, but also the language barrier. We produce majority of patient information or participant information sheets in English. Maybe we should be doing it in different languages. So these are things where you don't have diversity in clinical trials. Essentially folks, clinicaltrials.gov, get in touch with the hospital, all the details are there. The worst somebody can say to you is no, but that's highly unlikely because most trials want to see patients. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when each episode goes live.